I personally um, do not tell people what to list their price for or their ho- their property for. I will give them a range that I think it would fall under. And I always give the caveat of, you know, I mean, of course, there's an actual like document that goes along with all listing paperwork that says, hey, the market conditions can fluctuate because they can. So, hey, seller, you know, we're, we're putting your property on the market for this dollar. It doesn't mean we're going to get it. And it doesn't mean you're definitely going to get anywhere near it because you never know um, is basically the advisory. But um, yeah, in that case, um, I really think it's important for sellers to choose their price so that when and if things don't go the way they assumed they would, you know, we can revisit and say, you know, well, we tried it your way or let's try it my way. There's a lot of strategies of how to price and how to handle pricing if a property stays on the market longer than you hope. So it is an investment, but housing is also more than an investment, which is why real estate is so touchy for people. For a good time, you should go on Google and just type in realtors are <laughs> in the top like 10 things you get are just so what comes scandalous. Up? Um, you know, everything from all Do the Do people not like realtors? People don't like realtors. Oh, I no. didn't know that. Yeah, we're scum. Why? Um, cuz we don't have the an houses. honest bone in our body. That's the sentiment? Someone posted that on my market report comments. About, just wow. us scummy realtors don't an honest bone in your body or something like that. I don't know. You know. People get really touchy because it's housing. It's home. You yeah, but know? that's like shooting the messenger, right? You guys aren't the ones. I uh, So, okay. So a little history. Originally, realtors and real estate was pretty unregulated. So um, people did a lot of shady things. Now, there is a distinction. In fact, if you hire someone that is called a realtor, then they have had an, um, they're part of the National Association of Realtors and they've had an extra layer of ethics training and they continue to do so. And they're sort of um, advertising that they abide by a certain ethical, you know, boundary because there are weird gray areas sometimes where you have to, you know, you're a fiduciary. That's different than just, being a, sa- a car salesman, you you can as a car salesman. I, my understanding, I don't believe there's any fiduciary duty there. You can just you know basically do what you need to do, even if it benefits you, to get something sold. You can't do that with housing. So um, you do owe your clients ethical consideration above yourself. And but if you just hire a real estate agent, they n- haven't necessarily gone through that. So realtors. Sorry, I'm a realtor. They're better. Yeah. Yeah, because you can, that. you know, but that doesn't mean that there aren't gray areas and that there aren't, you know, sometimes things to think about and figure out what's the, the best way. There's legal considerations. Is that just because you're getting a cut that people think you guys are trying to oh, yeah. up so the that's, price? Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's where that's funny. I could talk about that. Yeah, well, excuse me. It does depend on... Um, you know, where you are in the hierarchy of realtors. So um, like, for example, for me, um, when I take a commission, my broker retains some of it as a fee um, for overseeing me, basically. They do have, um, they are like, the broker of record on the contract that I write is they retain that contract. Like if I died, they would still, that would still be an active contract with that brokerage. I'm an agent of the brokerage. Okay. Yeah. So I work, I don't work for them, you know, in my own business, but I, they retain a portion of my You work commission. along with yeah, them. Yeah. They take a percentage. So off the top, they take a percentage. In the digital age, there's also a new trend where you get referrals from online people that have really perfected the art of funneling people from the internet to you to help with real estate. And if you find a good one, you'll pay another, you'll pay like 30 percent off the top 25 20 to 30 percent to off this the person top to a customers? company a corporate referral some company whose business it is, is to capture people's names phone numbers and then you cold call them and get them so sometimes you're taking like a huge portion of that money and then um it's still a lot of money because it's a percentage and then with prices going up your per- your pay goes up as a realtor as well um but on top of that, then there's all these costs and fees of doing business. And then we're, we own our own businesses. So we get, you know, self-employment tax, which is basically like doubling up on tax sometimes. So it's a, there's a lot of money out for how much money comes in. It's still a really good job. But I do know that some people have the impression they'll basically go, oh, a realtor gets paid 3% of the purchase price. That's a, a million dollar house. That's $30,000. 
you know, or whatever it is. I think that's right. Yeah. And they'll be like that, you know, they just made $30,000 in a month or whatever, but it actually doesn't add up that way. It's a lot of taxes. There's a lot of fees. Yeah. Do you get to set your own percentage? Or is um, there it a is negotiable. Standard? It's negotiable. There are market standards, but it's negotiable with your clients and with um, your broker. I know that there was some um, talk, I think, recently about, like, moving to a – like, because right now, if you're a buyer, your commission to your agent um, who's representing you in your transaction is paid by the seller. That's the way it's done in Humboldt County 99.9% .9 of the time. So um, it's nice because as a buyer, you're not going to have that amount of money. You're trying to put it all into a property. So um, and, and the seller is the one getting the big theoretically payoff. So that's how, how it works here. But um, I've heard talk that they're trying to switch it to make it so that, yeah, seller pays their agent and then the buyer pays their agent, which would really um, – it would – it would just frustrate the market a little bit, I think. It'd be interesting. I don't think that'll happen anytime soon here, but it could. Hmm. <laughs> it's all negotiable. I didn't know that. Yeah, could... It... So when you are representing a client trying to sell their house, is it ethical for you to advise them on their price? Like if they come in and say, oh, I want to sell this for 450 and you're like, we could really get closer to five. I mean... Sellers are always wanting your opinion to value, and that is part of what we do. You should be able, as a realtor, to justify it, um, but it's an art and a science, you know? To, like, what's the market doing, Ami? Yeah, because you <laughs> don't want I get it to my sit house, for you know? four months. Um, shockingly, people often have a number in their head of what they want for their house a lot of times, um, and I like to work with that number. Um, and, you know, try to just work with what they want to sell their house for. Um, sometimes people actually need a certain amount to, like, pay off a mortgage or maybe they have multiple mortgages, you know. Um, so there's a lot of considerations when doing that. As far as the ethics of it, this is like an ethics quiz right now, and I haven't done my ethics training recently. But I personally um, do not tell people what to list their price for or their, their property for. I will – give them a range that I think it would fall under. And I always give the caveat of, you know, I mean, of course, there's an actual like document that goes along with all listing paperwork that says, hey, the market conditions can fluctuate because they can. So, hey, seller, you know, we're, we're putting your property on the market for this dollar. It doesn't mean we're going to get it. And it doesn't mean you're definitely going to get anywhere near it because you never know. Um, it's basically the advisory. But um, yeah, in that case, um, I really think it's important for sellers to choose their price so that when and if things don't go the way they assumed they would, you know, we can revisit and say, you know, well, we tried it your way or let's try it my way. There's a lot of strategies of how to price and how to handle pricing if a property stays on the market longer than you hope. Um, sometimes you have sellers who are like, this is what I want and I'm not taking a dollar less and that's it. That's going to be a hard client to work with. It is hard, yeah. you know, but also sometimes they're not wrong, you know. Sometimes it's like, well, I kind of do think this property's worth that.